Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and um, a long time ago, uh, when I was in the Army, I spoke to a Marine officer who was still in the Marines, but we were, we were both in Iraq when the war started, and I was in the Marines. And during the initial push to Baghdad, uh, we basically starved. <laughs> um, and uh, so I talked to this officer, and he was in logistics. And so I asked him, I go, uh, hey, sir, what was up? Uh, I was, you know, infantry and uh, we starved. We absolutely starved. Uh, and he goes, oh, yeah, we knew that was part of the plan. And I'm like, what? He goes, uh, did you ever run out of water? I go, no. Did you ever run out of uh, fuel for your vehicles? No. Did you ever run out of ammo or batteries for anything? No. Yeah, we had to make some choices and we could move you all this fast with food or we could move you this fast without. So we chose, you know, we knew you'd eventually get something and you didn't really starve. Like you were down to like one uh, MRE a day and then like a couple days you got zero. But like uh, there were like 22 hour days. I'm not even kidding. Like 22 hour work days in combat in a war so you're burning like thousands you know um but technically and he's like technically read the label on an mre that says you know one person per day um so uh, i was like all right and then we had this other really interesting conversation he goes he goes you know we war game all this stuff all the time he goes guess how fast society collapsed and not not in a nuclear war but if there's enough of a of a reason for society to collapse guess how quickly it collapses i go a couple weeks he goes 24 hours i was like shit and i never believed that until this year um with no snow no ice no precipitation an entire region and effectively half of the state has shut down like it's ridiculous so this is my excuse why I'm not reviewing Batwoman, Catwoman, Catman, Batman, whatever you call it, issue number three, even though I bought it. So uh, one thing I did notice when I bought it is that the second page is an ad, a very special ad, an ad for Nubia, real one, written by L.L. McKinney, a segregationist racist. <laughs> And the ad copy says, you know, what do you do when society doesn't see you as human? And I'm like, oh, you didn't. You didn't. You know, you thought, no, you really? Okay. So just to bring it back in case you missed my videos, uh, DC decided to go into YAs very, very heavily about a year and a half ago, two years ago. And it takes a while because YA, you can't drop a 20 page story in the YA market. It can't be 50 pages. Even a hundred pages is considered to be short. They want that thing to be a couple hundred pages. They want like manga essentially. Um, uh, so that you had like Harley Quinn breaking glass. That was like 200 something pages. I think even like that, uh, uh, what was the one where they had, uh, Gotham high that was pushing 200 pages. So there's an expectation for the, it to be, you know, uh, manga volume size. And so it takes a while. And when they did this push, and the woman who was put in charge has since been laid off, they had like 30 of them, you know, uh, in the works. And then they started coming out, and then, you know, DC found out that the market is, is flooded. The YA, you know, and there's whole entire, there's like YA versions of this channel where they just talk about, you know, all the problems in, you know, the YA, you know, what is it? Is it an industry? It's part of an industry? Whatever. You understand what I'm talking about. So um, then they started shutting it all down. They started canceling ones or just, just dumping them on the market. I think I saw a Bleeding Cool article where one of these graphic novels just went out with like literally zero marketing. It just showed up at places. <laughs> um, but uh, this one's had a, had a buildup. And, you know, as soon as you saw the art, of course, it was terrible. It's just, It's like this shitty you know, Cartoon Network, you know, uh, everyone gets a metal style of uh, writing. But you knew a couple of things. You knew, even though Nubia has been around for like 40 plus years, even though Nubia is an Amazonian uh, made from a different color of clay, 
<laughs> than Wonder Woman. That's why she's darker. Uh, it's comics. Hey, um, that it was going to have. No, it wasn't going to do. If they were going to do a Nubia YA graphic novel, it was going to be number one, all based around racism. It can't just be a black girl getting into an adventure. Oh, behind my dresser, there's a magical uh, portal to another. No, no. <laughs> it's got to be about racism. Because again, when SJWs see a black person, they think slavery. They look at a Mexican American, they say uh, illegal immigration. Um, Asians always confuse them. They're not really sure what to do. It's like, oh, uh, you know. Uh, but um, so if it's about a black character, uh, it has to be about racism. And then the other is that they have to hire based on racism. They have to hire based on segregationist, I'm not going to say ideals because that's not idealistic, uh, segregationist uh, precepts. Uh, the idea is uh, uh, a character that was created by white people uh, cannot be written by white people because, and I'm going to say their beliefs, not mine, people of different races can't understand each other. So you have to hire a black person to write black people because a non-black person can't write black people. Okay, so why is Ta-Nehisi Coates writing Captain America? Because it's different rules for different people. Uh, here, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut to the chase. Don't be racist and you can avoid all of this stupid double think ridiculous shit. So they hired someone based on race of, racist concepts that only a black person can understand other black people, can write them, uh, and so they hired a black person, L.L. McKinney, which, plot twist, has no experience in comics. Wow. <laughs> Where have we seen this before? Somebody handed a uh, highly touted, highly publicized um, DC book with no experience. And the person they hired is a racist. Very, very proudly in a promotional piece that went in every single DC comic. Uh, I, I know it was for like the last two weeks. I don't know if it's this week. L.L. Um, McKinney said, and again, this is a person being offered work with no experience, saying that she demanded that only people of her own race work on the book. Another way to say it, she refused to work with other races. It was actually a deal breaker. Racist segregationist precepts were a deal breaker for L.L. McKinney. And instead of laughing uncomfortably and then showing her the door or saying, oh, yeah, we don't do that because it's 2021 and we don't use segregation or racism in our hiring practices. You're very, very new in comics. This is your first comic. So we're going to pair you with someone with a lot of experience of any race. By the way, if you ever say anything like that ever again, if you ever again refuse to work with people of different races, we will fire you. I know it's contractor. It's not really firing, but you know what I mean. So then they put up the ad. And they say, how is Nubia going to deal with, you know, uh, because she's black, they don't treat her like a person. And I ask, how is L.L. McKinney dealing with that? Because DC didn't treat her like a person. They treated her like an object. Uh, and then when she said something that would get anyone of almost any other race walked out of the door by security... I don't even think they would mail you your shit. If you said something that racist, can you imagine getting a job at, I'll just say PetSmart because I'm parked outside of a PetSmart. And they said, hey, congratulations. You actually have no experience in retail, but we're making you the assistant manager. You're going to start taking over shifts by yourself uh, next week. But uh, I, as the manager, um, you know, uh, I'll, I'll train you up for a week. So uh, is there anything you would like to ask? You know, you know, what time is, you know, lunch or, you know, how long are your breaks? Can you imagine a new PetSmart employee saying, uh, yes, yeah, so uh, I don't want to work with anyone that's not in my race. That's a deal breaker for me. Like, what the hell? You just get walked the hell out. They'd be like, 
they would go to like ask you for your uniform back and then they'd be like, you know what? We don't want it back because it was worn by a racist bigot segregationist. You go ahead and keep that, you know, uh, but just uh, don't wear it you know, out in public because we don't want people, you know, knowing you were ever associated with PetSmart. Holy shit. So not only do they hire based on racism and then they support a segregationist. And given to her demands to not have her work with people from other races. But then in the advertisement, they want to look woke. No, DC. No, L.L. McKinney. No, DC Marketing. No, DC Editor that hired L.L. McKinney. You don't get to be woke. You're the racist. You're the segregationist. You're the bad guys. What the fuck? And look what you are doing to the black people you pretend to care about. Can you imagine being young and black and going to the comic book store, going to the library, going to Barnes & Noble, and like 95% plus of the books with black leads are about racism. You are going to make them paranoid beyond belief. They're going to believe they live in some society from 100, 200, 300 years ago. When it's actually pretty darn good. LL. You got a book with no experience at all in comics. You got to make demands on your first job in a new industry. They proudly shared your racist segregationist thoughts. And then they want to look woke in the advertising. <laughs> LL McKinney, more like F you McKinney. That's what I say. But anyway, um, so uh, uh, I can't pirate. I can't. I have a business that relies on reviewing comics. And I, you know, obviously I have to pay for them. So I have to prove my work. That's why I always show you the, the physical comic I bought or the, uh, uh, the what do you call it, the, uh, the Comixology app. But I mean, holy shit. And I mean, even if you're black, are you like right on? Or are you just like, wow, that is pandering as fuck? I think even as a black person, you'd be like, wow, you really don't see me as a person. I'm just like some like simpleton. You're like, oh shit. Oh yeah. Okay. (laughs) What the hell? It's like uh, RDC World One. Freaking hilarious YouTube channel. Long Beach Griffey. Caleb City. These are all black comedians. Yes, they do cover racism. Very rarely. Holy shit, rarely. I swear, RDC World 1 does like one video a year on it. And I, I wouldn't call uh, Long Beach Griffey very woke, but he's a little woke. He's a little woke. I would say less than 5%. I can't think of Caleb City ever covering race, like, ever once. Um, but I'm just saying, I'm not black. Um, but... I see black people when they create their own content and it's not constant race bullshit. What actually happens is this is charity. This is woke white liberals at DC treating L.L. McKinney like a UNICEF kid. That's racist as fuck. Hey, and then plot twist, L.L. McKinney is racist as fuck. But you know who isn't racist? Almost everyone else. So... You don't get to be woke while being racist and then try to dunk on us, non-racists, who just want to read entertaining shit. So, um, yes, I will eventually, uh, probably, buy this and then review it. Uh, But uh, I don't, I I see no arguments against piracy. I don't pirate myself. But what, what is the argument against piracy in 2021? You got these racist ass companies who then want to lecture you on racism. You got these companies that say the force is female, we support strong women, and then they freaking fire a woman for being a Republican and defame her on the way out, saying that she said the exact opposite of what the fuck she said. Oh my God, these woke, woke, like Antifa types and corporations combining like Voltron is like the freaking worst thing I've ever seen in my entire almost 50 years. Like this is... It's going to be bad. Like, it's going to be bad for a while. 
But you know what? You actually don't have to buy their shit. And they need you to buy their shit. So, hmm, who's really in power here? Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.